Welcome to Arlington Public News. I'm Brenda Mahoney. And I'm James Milland. Thanks for joining us in this edition of APN. In practice, we're already doing what we're requesting and put for, putting forth for, for town meeting for uh, the sanctuary town status. Arlington takes on the debate of protecting otherwise law-abiding illegal immigrants. Plus, the high school moves into the next phase of a potential rebuild. And in sports, playoff action all around for Arlington High School. We'll have a roundup in sports. That and more up next. Stay with us. In this week's snapshot, the Board of Selectmen unanimously back a resolution to become a sanctuary town. And Arlington High School becomes one of a handful in the state to get in the pipeline for state aid for a new school. APN's Corrales Placencia joins us from the studio now with the details. Corrales? Thanks, James. Groups both for and against becoming a sanctuary town held signs outside of Town Hall Monday, February 27th. Inside, the Board of Selectmen came to its unanimous decision after public comment where hundreds were on hand to listen. The Board officially endorsed Warrant Article 59 that will go before town meeting members in April. The article is proposed by Arlington Human Rights Commission and is seen as a largely symbolic but comes with a remote risk of losing federal aid. People from both sides of the argument gave their reasons, some wanting to ensure that illegal immigrants don't have to worry about being asked their status, others wanting to make sure no law is broken by becoming a sanctuary town. It's hard when there's this kind of dialogue and it, it, it's put in the place of like one side is the heartfelt and the people with the heart and then the other side are the people who, you know, don't have heart or they don't care and I just, I don't think that's a valid argument. I don't feel it's a fair conversation to have it in that way because I think people have hearts on both sides and people care about people here. Any one of us could have been born into or could find ourselves in an insecure or violent situation. From our position of relative wealth and comfort, we should show respect, kindness, and hospitality to everyone. I just want to voice my opposition to the sanctuary status. Um, as a lifelong resident of Arlington, I believe that our declaration of a sanctuary status would be detrimental to a town that's already overtaxed and financially stressed. So I just ask those that are opposed to it to take a look at the data and the evidence and to question in their own hearts whether their objections based on finance or their objections based on public safety are not really simply objections that are based in some other kind of bias. Town meeting members will ultimately decide if Arlington becomes a sanctuary town during the town meeting in April. Arlington High School has been invited into the feasibility study period by the Massachusetts School Building Authority. If all goes as planned, it means AHS will receive state funds for a new building. Town voters approved money for a feasibility study last June. This after the high school was notified was at a risk of losing accreditation for failing facilities. An architect will be hired to come up with options to renovate or rebuild the high school. Superintendent, Superintendent Kathleen Bodie says residents will then get a chance to review the options by the next school year. A proposition two and a half vote will most likely be needed to fully fund the project. And if all goes to plan, Arlington could have a new high school by 2022. That's it for today's snapshot. Back to you, James. It was recently announced that U.S. Customs and Border Protection has asked various police departments in the Boston area to make bed space available for short-term accommodation of federal immigration detainees. When we asked him about it, Arlington's Chief of Police, Frederick Ryan, was unequivocal about his department's stance on this issue. Our values are not for sale. Uh, we're a community policing organization. Uh, laser focused on fair and impartial policing. You know, nothing is more important to us than the trust that the community places in its police department. And anything that would um, compromise that trust uh, is something that we would give great pause to and seriously consider before we would agree to doing. And that would include holding federal detainees. In related news, an imam has been traveling around the United States educating people about Islam 
and he recently taught some Arlingtonians about the pillars of Islam here. APN's Harry Kramer has more. On February 24th, Arlington residents filled the pews at Park Avenue Congregational Church. But they hadn't come for a sermon. They had come to learn more about Islam. Imam Sami Abdul Aziz calls it Islam 101. By introducing Islam to those who may not know much about the faith, he hopes to foster better understanding. Uh, the organization that I started, a nonprofit, is called Common Ground Institute and Services. And we go around giving talks on Islam, ISIS, Islamophobia, and other topics to break down the fear of Muslims and help uh, Americans better understand this misunderstood faith. When we say Allah, God, 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 God. During his presentation, Aziz focused on the basic tenets or pillars of Islam. Since most Americans have never met a Muslim, Aziz believes this type of religious education is crucial for interfaith cooperation and understanding. Uh, so what that means, it leaves open the possibility that people like Confucius, Buddha, and other revered figures around the world could possibly have been prophets. Halfway through, Aziz was joined on stage by his wife and the vice president of Common Ground Services, Viosa Karimi. Both Aziz and Karimi struck a casual tone. At one point, Aziz pulled out his iPhone to show off one of his favorite apps, Find My Masjid. I didn't, just, I didn't pay three dollars, so I keep getting ads. <laughs> so every time I turn it on, I have to wait for the ad, and then you hit the X. A bit How can we be At the end of the presentation, the couple took questions from the audience and thanked Pastor Jill Small. That's part of why we want to do this, and we want our church to be involved outside of the walls of this, this structure. So we want to go out into the world, we want to invite our neighbors in and, uh, and learn more about each other and, and you know, walk together as our faith directs us. So that's what we're looking to do. Imam Aziz hopes to expand Common Ground in the future and is looking for volunteers. To learn more or to contact Imam Aziz, visit their website at commongroundservices.org. Harrison Kramer, Arlington Public News. Up next, higher than normal levels of lead have been found in water at Arlington High School. And the Community Preservation Act considers awarding a variety of projects in town, two of which would improve the town's water recreational areas. That and more when we come back. Welcome back. Well, Arlington Health and school officials have found higher than acceptable levels of lead in water at the high school. Recent testing revealed three hand washing sinks came back slightly above the acceptable level, while mop sink and drinking fountain came back at a higher level. The water fountain was in the preschool section of the high school. Health and Human Services officials tell APN the bubbler was little used and posed very low risk. APN Zach Merchant has more. In response to the Flint, Michigan water crisis, Governor Charlie Baker's administration announced a $2 million grant to help Massachusetts public schools test their water supplies for lead. Tests of Arlington High School found elevated lead levels in five of the 28 fixtures tested. The situation is that we, we had five, five fixtures that um, had actionable le levels, so if you're over 15 parts per billion, and uh, some were just a little bit over, and then there was one sink that was was considerably over. The school has taken steps to remove the fixtures. Um, they've already been removed and they're going to be replaced with uh, new fixtures and until they're tested again there's going to be no longer any use of those those fixtures. Unlike in Flint, the problem does not lie in the water supply itself. Aging pipes are the culprit here. Officials are confident this is the case based on the test results. While elevated lead levels appeared five times on the first draw, after water had been sitting for several hours, levels dropped dramatically to well below acceptable levels after a 30-second flush of the tap. First of all, the water is fine. It's coming into people's homes. What's the issue is, you know, what the age of the pipes are mm -hmm. and what condition they're in. The state testing program is voluntary, and as of now, about half of Massachusetts's public schools have opted in. Across the state, over 100 public school buildings have tested positive for elevated levels of lead at least once. Now, here in Arlington, AHS was the first school to test positive. Earlier on, the elementary schools and the Otteson were all tested and came back negative for elevated lead levels. Tests in the town will continue to ensure that this isn't a more widespread problem, 
but Superintendent Bodie and Health and Human Services personnel all stress that this was a relatively isolated incident and has since been contained. We feel that there's very, very low risk uh, for parents to be concerned. Officials stress that by all measures, the Arlington water supply is safe. If you do have concerns at home, Health and Human Services offers these tips. You can actually contact the Department of Public Works. They have a division over there that will actually do some testing at your faucet um, for you. But in the meantime, if you did have a concern, um, one of the, the key things that you can do is run the water. Typically, if it's um, a fixture that's been sitting overnight um, for you know, several hours, um, simply running it for a good 30 seconds typically flushes, will flush out the um, you, you know, lead. For Arlington Public News, I'm Zach Merchant. The schools have installed a reverse osmosis water filtration system at the preschool and nurse's office, which were the affected areas in the high school. And they will be retested for lead and copper to ensure that the problem has been rectified. The Community Preservation Act provides approximately $1.4 million annually for open spaces, historic resources, recreational land and community housing in Arlington. Early last month, the committee in charge of distributing these funds met to hear proposals from hopeful applicants. The nine different presentations ranged in size and location. This report features three, a proposal to renovate Spy Pond, a master plan and study of the Arlington Reservoir, and a housing proposal at Downing Square. This presentation focuses on the second phase of the CONCOM's Spy Pond Edge and Erosion Control Project. The request is for $552,900. And the purpose is to rehabilitate failed spy pond shoreline at four town-owned parcels, Scannell Field Spy Pond Park, Boys and Girls Club in the area by the end of Spring Valley Street. The Conservation Commission and its partners wish to mitigate erosion and preserve the public shoreline. The goals for this project, uh, obviously engaging stakeholders. Uh, we want to find out from um, the community how we're utilizing these, um, how we're utilizing the reservoir. Um, there's tremendous assets there, um, we have the beach, we have the walking paths, we have the trails. Some of the issues and some of the challenges we have there, non-point pollution, shoreline erosion, um, aging infrastructure. It's primarily focusing um, in the beach area, but as the study is done, we'll identify things along the um, along the paths and along the trails as well. The next project is Downing Square, which we are proposing to do as a, um, an initiative that combines Downing Square at 19R Park Ave with 117 Broadway. We're asking specifically for Downing Square at this point so that we can use the funding as pre-development as we move forward. We purchased the land in August of 2016. It is environmentally dirty land. Uh, we have done lots of environmental work and categorization of what's there. We know it's PCPs and VOCs. Uh, we have a plan for cleanup. All nine projects have received preliminary approval with a total funding recommendation for FY 2017 of just over two million dollars. The committee will take a final vote on March 14th. Well, I believe this is the second year now that CPA um, funds have been are being awarded. So we're starting to see some things such as um, the uh, Jason Russell House, I believe, and the um, Robbins Farm from last year's funding. Those will soon be uh, getting redone as a result of those mm -hmm. funds. And where the town is as aware of both its recreational areas and its historic uh, significance mm -hmm. as Arlington is, there's plenty more to come, I'm sure. That's right. Well, up next, a chance to meet the subject of Arlington's community read this year, transgender activist Nicole Maines. And three winning teams at the high school. We'll have a look in sports, that and more when we come back. Stay with us. This year's community read in Arlington is Becoming Nicole, the story of trans activist Nicole Maines, who along with her twin brother was assigned male at birth. Raised in rural America within a middle-class, politically conservative family, Nicole was the central figure in a landmark court decision confirming transgender students' rights to access the bathroom of the gender with which they identify. The Robbins Library has scheduled various community read events in the month of March, beginning with an appearance by Nicole and her father on Saturday, March 4th at Town Hall. 
It is free and open to the public, and you can find more information, including how to register for the event, at the library's website. Well, two teams are Middlesex League champions. Both the Arlington High School boys hockey and basketball teams are in the playoffs, as well as the girls hockey team. Here's Matt Case with the winning stories. The Arlington High School boys hockey team is in the Super 8 for the second year in a row, but they're coming into this tournament as a much stronger team than in 2016. Last season, the Spy Ponders were the seventh seed and had to compete in a playing game to reach the quarterfinals. That game, they lost 4-2 to Hingham. This year, Arlington is the four seed. They've earned an 8-2-2 two two record against top 20 teams, including a big-time win over Pope Francis, who was ranked number one in Massachusetts at the time. The Spy Ponders reached their peak rankings in the Boston Globe of number two in the state behind Malden Catholic. On Sunday, the Spy Ponders will begin their quest for their first state title in 46 years. They will take on Hingham again at the Sangha Center in Lowell in the first round match, which is also the quarterfinals, meaning they do not have to go through a playing game this year. Arlington shut out Hingham 3-0 in their regular season matchup on February 12th. This, the, the matchup is a best of three series, so even if Arlington does win on Sunday, they'll have to beat Hingham a second time to move on to play the winner of Malden Catholic in Marshfield. The girls' hockey team was victorious in their first playoff matchup against Peabody Linfield Wednesday night in the Division I tournament, winning easily 5-1. The 14th-ranked Spy Ponders are now past the preliminary round and will play their first official game against number 3 Woburn on Saturday. The girls are in a similar situation as last year, where they, as the 10th seed, also won their prelim game but lost their first rounder. We'll see if they can go deeper into the bracket. Turning over to the boys basketball team, the Spy Ponders have earned themselves the top seed in the North Division II tournament. Arlington is the only undefeated team in the bracket out of 17 participants. Their number one spot also gave them a bye in the first round. So on Monday, Burlington and Tewksbury squared off for the right to play the Spy Ponders. Burlington squeaked past Tewksbury 55-52. So now Arlington and Burlington, two Middlesex League teams who are very familiar with each other, will battle Thursday at Arlington. The Spy Ponders won both regular season matchups with the Red Devils. Brenda, James, back to you. Thanks, Matt, and good luck to all of the high school teams in the playoffs. Certainly an exciting time. It really is. Hasn't been this exciting in quite some time. So thank you for joining Arlington Public News as we explore events and issues affecting Arlington. Check out extended interviews and our latest segments on the web at news.acmi.tv. And don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter, at Arlington Public. I'm Brenda Mahoney. And I'm James Milan. Thanks for joining us.